and in categories in the raw metaphysical, not in the technical and mathematical sense, uh, that are involved in our mathematics is obviously going to have going to have to be transformed anyway. So one can't really start from an area like computer science uh, in trying to find what the correct mathematical framework for representing mm -hmm. some fundamental notion of the process is. I would argue yeah, you, you can't use quantum, quantum theory either. No, no. no. <laughs> 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 this, 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 you're just underlining the extraordinary depth of this problem. Of this yeah, I mean, uh, uh, because after all, all, all our mathematics, at least no, the two, has, has really rested ultimately on static categories of being. Certainly it does when one looks at uh, set theory as a foundation. Uh, uh, exactly. It is an issue. I completely agree. If, 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 if in fact categories, if, even in the technical sense of category theory, ultimately presuppose a sort of final, un unanalyzable in further terms, so I would agree with the definition of, of, the, of their concept, the very concept of category, some underlying notion that is you know, fundamentally static. Um, that rests on itself on set or self understanding notion, then it, it seems any such program as this is, is blocked. Uh, this has been the big objection, I think, for, for many people to the whole Bohm approach, that if we really, to go down this process road, we have to give up science itself, because we have no framework in which to think outside the, that doesn't involve the notion of objects. I don't agree with such a view, mm -hmm. but it has been mm -hmm. a very influential factor mm -hmm. in blocking Right, the development of this approach. It's quite interesting, Julian Barber posted an interesting uh, exchange with Lee Smolin on the web a few weeks ago. Uh, they had quite a lengthy exchange at the time that Lee's book on three roads to quantum gravity came out. And in the course of this, um, Barber said, and it caught me very much mind, in fact, the one occasion that I heard Julian Barber in the audience listening to Basil, listen. Basil. Well, okay, completely <laughs> refusing to listen. <laughs> uh, completely refusing to listen to Basil. It was, it was rather fascinating. It was exactly like I imagine it would have been if Parmenides and Heraclitus had met face to face. It would have been <laughs> absolute dialogue with the deaf. But it would have been a very interesting and uh, illuminating one. Um, and he said several times in the course of this exchange with Lee Barber, I do not see how we can think without nouns. The, the, the nouns must be the most fundamental category uh, in our mm -hmm. structure in the world and therefore reflected in our language, the fact that nouns are, um, to him, the most fundamental elements in language, because I can't see how we could think at all without objects, right. which is the expression of this very strong metaphysical preconception then, that this But then the whole challenges. point about the real world. Then what mm -hmm. is the things are junction in the way? Yeah, well, I disagree <laughs> as well. I disagree. I, I, I agree. I agree. I think... Yes, how a junction could be basic. Okay. Anyway, the point is, I'm just trying to underline the point that this is a, such a deep issue mm -hmm. yeah. that it's not going to be resolved by appealing to different uh, ways of modelling processes in a sense interior to something like computers. <coughs> no, I just gave this as, as an example yeah. how difficult it was. Yeah, there. sure. It's sure. such a simple setting. Sure, sure. sure. I disagree because yes, <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree with Julian to some extent. But yes, we live in the manifest. We live in the explicit order. We cannot get out of it unless we think you can with transcendental meditation or something. But well, as, as, scientists, as scientists, we live in. We're talking about manifest explicit orders. But what? So, but, to say that we can't live in the implicate order, or we can't measure in the implicate order, or we can't experience it directly in a scientific way, does not mean that we have to deny it as a philosophy, yes. that, we believe, that, that we try to understand our, um, our measurements and our, our experiences of the explicate order in terms of or that we couldn't and, apprehend it intellectually if we had a different way of ordering, of, of, of understanding the, the sum and hang of our mathematics. And, uh, so, I, I think don't, that... Don't forget David actually said that he felt that we actually perceived mm -hmm. in terms of the intricate order. Mm -hmm. And then we yeah. made it manifest mm -hmm. and we made it explicate. Without that music. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. well, well, even with, when you're talking now, when you're talking, I mean, David's... I think his point was that when I'm talking, you're talking, we don't know exactly what we're going to the next sentence. Right. So we are really living in the implicate order and explicate order at the same time. So uh, it's not something that. Uh, okay. Is um, really I, I said as scientists, and I said measurement, because what, what our mathematical theories are talking about are quantifiable, measurable things, really. 
it, 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 when we're describing, I mean, we're not we're not writing down mathematical theorems about musical appreciation or of, of what we're going to say next. We're writing down mathematical descriptions of electrons and photons and things like that. And so, <laughs> all right, let's go on. Let's go back to musicology. You know, that's a separate issue. I'm not going to go down that road. So, um, notice, anyway. Notice, Nick, your talk is very uninteresting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going too quickly, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> so I don't feel, yeah, I feel, I, I'm quite happy for people to you know, go off and do this. This is fine. I'll just stand here and watch. <laughs> um, okay, so, as we have uh, discussed, the basic idea is that, that with process, or implicate order is that you, you have this underlying process that is or whole movement that's, that's continually evolving according to some evolution parameter and that everything we see in the manifest order in the implicate order is coming from that process so the process is existing outside space and time space and time are actually coming from it from the process uh, there you go <laughs> <laughs> Just to summarise <laughs> what we've just been talking about, um, it's notoriously vague. <laughs> Bring us a fair description. <laughs> so, I mean, mechanism, if you want the better word, um, is something that we're, it's very easy to pin down mathematically, conventional mechanistic theories that, that we, that this is just one representation of it. Um, and I would argue that it's, as I said, it's, I've already said it's essentially dualistic in that you have space-time and things interacting on it. But the, the way we describe the actual laws of interaction um, of our entities is also dualistic, and in particular in, in the case of quantum mechanics, in that we have um, operators in some sense that are specifying the dynamical evolution and those operators exist in some mathematical space that is separate to the things they're operating on. In terms of quantum theory, you've got the operator algebra and you've got the Hilbert space of state vectors, which are, in conventional treatment, two different things. So already we've got a problem for a process approach that your, your basic components in your theory, your operators and the operands, are already in two different mathematical spaces. Um, I mean, we, we know that, that um, you, can, you can certainly get the operators as part of the algebra, and Babel <coughs> was showing some of that this morning. And that's exactly what we need for a process approach, because we need, if we're going to agree on any mathematical structure that we're going to try and represent the process by, we need everything to be in there. We need all the components of our theory to be described within this single mathematical structure. So we need to find a mathematical structure in which we can um, embed all of these different types of things that we have in conventional theories. The space-time background, the operators, and the things that they're operating on. And that what the dynamics are now is just internal restructuring of this thing. What about observers? Sorry? What about observers? What you observers. Yeah. Well, within the, I mean, observers in the kind of, so you can take two positions here. You can be a radical process philosopher or a radical process scientist and then you say the process is everything so the observers have to be in there the, well, then, the, then it becomes pretty difficult to actually to talk about in the same way that yeah. you, you get the same issues in non-process approaches what I would prefer and I'm not sure if I put it on here um, is that all, what, what, all we can hope to achieve <coughs> I think this is Oh, I mean, I, I don't know if it's science, it's a way of life rather than a, a strict um, way of doing science. All we can hope to achieve is that we accept that when the observer is outside of what's being observed, and we're trying to represent that in a process way, is that we know it's approximate. So this 